Comrades, welcome back to Oriental Empires, our attempt at surviving with Chu. Last time I did not do the best job imaginable and our poor leader Mo Wu died a horrific death in the forests to the south. Truly unfortunate, but I have learned a lesson there and also I have learned from your comments. So there's a few things we'll have to address as we go through this uh, episode and in particular through this turn. So let's begin by just looking at our notifications. First of all, Mo Wu won a battle, but uh, yes, uh, not in actual fact, he perished in that battle. He has honored his ancestors and in turn his descendants shall honor him. Then we have a new leader named, again, this uh, very difficult name for me, Kao Hui. Your nation has been left with no leaders of any note. This man has seized the moment and established himself as the new leader. However, he has no legitimacy, so his authority is weak. Unrest amongst the nobility should be expected for a considerable time before he is accepted. So we start in actual fact with minus nine authority, which is horrific. So there's not going to be any expansion in our near future. So let's zoom to this uh, leader of ours. He is in Danyang. And I actually, I was told I shouldn't pronounce the G's really. So Danyang. And then, uh, yes, down here on the bottom left, we can actually see our overall culture and authority. I did not see that last time I was looking for it, but uh, we can see the leader's authority, which is horrific, but this is the overall. So zero at the moment, which I suppose uh, is just basically back where we started. But uh, I think we're going to have a problem with the founding of a new city to the north. But at the same time, I think we shouldn't delay with that. We will have access to both copper and uh, mulberries here. So, yes, it might take some ju uh, juggling here to keep everyone happy, but let's give it a go. Then also in Danyan, there was the wooden palisade completed. A stout wooden wall will keep out bandits and raiders and makes the inhabitants feel secure. This boosts happiness and encourages the growth of the settlement. So let's actually have a look at that. We can zoom right in again and watch the poor peasants toil in the frozen fields. But there we go. We have a nice wall here. It's obviously not the best, but certainly it's better than nothing. It will at least keep the opportunistic raiders out. So that's something, I guess. We have to take our uh, small accomplishments as they come. Then another farm was also completed there, and that's one of the things I must be very cautious about. If we set the peasants to work too frequently, other than of course their usual farming work, then they shall become very uh, restless and quite rebellious eventually. So we can see the noble unrest is very high because of the death of Mo Wu, I'm sure that was the main reason. Uh, insufficient authority there at least. Local factors apparently, this is feuds, difficult personalities and so on, but perhaps Mo Wu's death does feed into that as well. The peasants though, they have mainly their uh, unrest from also local factors, but there you can see the labor service. If that becomes too high, it will certainly lead to trouble. So we're going to have to be very careful here. So right now we are building one uh, new farm here on the edge of our territory. Let's just have a look. Is there anything else we're building here? No. But there is the possibility of building a pavilion in the hills to the north. I'm thinking even though this will certainly lead to uh, more labor unrest, the advantages of that I think outweigh the... Uh, disadvantages. The pavilion is a pleasant place in the hills to visit, which will calm the minds of the lords and ladies. Why worry about politics when the living is good? So that will make the nobles a lot happier. So I'm very uh, keen on doing that. It will take 30 hour maintenance, but right now we're looking okay overall. 
So I'm willing to do that. It will obviously take a long time, but that's okay. So build farms, we leave that as it is. Let's look at Ying at the moment and just see if there's uh, anything else. We're building one farm there. I think we're automatically making use of the rhinoceros. Uh, it's yellow there, so I don't think we need to build anything, which is also another question I had about the horses. Apparently we will have access to them without necessarily having a, a resource on the map. So that's good to know as well. So these are our only cities, not too much management to do. But then also another comment was very important and that is we really cannot let the military affairs stagnate here. Let's just see where is the research screen again. Uh, no, no, next one lucky, yes. So shamanism, uh, horse domestication I think will certainly help for the military, but archers and so on, that has to be our next priority. So that's a point well taken. Now let's have a look, is there anything uh, I can do with our new leader? You know, I'm a bit scared of actually sending him out now, but I see someone is skulking around at the edge of our map. Who is this? This is a, another unit of bandits, so I don't want them coming too close to the city, but I'm not going to send the leader out to fight them, not without reinforcements. So maybe that's what I'll do. Let's have a look at uh, Dan Young here and just recruit some peasant militia. Not the best, of course, but I think it will help just to stabilize things in case uh, that force is being a bit pesky there. So let's do that and then send this whole lot out to chase them. Of course, I'd still like our uh, leader now to get some battle experience, but I'm not going to make the same mistakes of the past. So send everyone out and go and hunt him. Good, so that's happening. So, can we settle now in the north here? Useful resources. Try to settle within three hexes, so we know that part. So this is indeed a very good site. You know, I'll take the risk. It will probably be a problem in terms of um, unrest, but there we go. Raw has been settled. And we automatically have mulberry resources, which is good for uh, the value of silk. Interesting. So Ruhr will become our silk manufacturing capital and once we expand a tile or two to the west we'll have access to the copper as well. Maybe we could actually, yes we do already so it's fine but uh, I won't tax the peasants with more labor right now. Anything else to do? I don't think so. Battle report, that was horrific. No need to dwell on past mistakes. So let's move on, we've been in winter long enough. So yes, the re uh, not the rebels, the bandits are indeed making a run for Ying. So I'm thinking we're not going to be able to reach it in time. So let's recruit a few units here, we don't have walls. Unfortunately, now we can't actually recruit anyone here. I suppose the settlement isn't large enough yet. Well, well, yes, we probably lack the... Yes, something like the Bowyer or other military buildings as well. It's going to take too long to get walls now. But, okay, just throw it in there. It takes all the labor again, but... In case they don't just make a straight beeline for the city, we might get enough time to get the walls up but that's being overly optimistic so Dan Young has now uh, finished what has it done actually no it's obviously still building the pavilion and all of that but uh, also the farm still but it's still growing there so that's a good thing to see the other cities are very stagnant because they're not building farms at the moment so I think we really do need to get a farm queued up at Rural just in case Perhaps even on the mulberry area there. Okay, just to get the thing going, otherwise there won't be any growth. So now we finished some research here, uh, the rammed earth wall, which will be very important, I think. 
and also the decorated ceramics. So let's have a look at this now and pick some more uh, essential military technology. So what do we have up here? The military drill. That uh, gives us peasant long spearmen. So that's a good thing. Let's do that straight away. Craft. Uh, is there anything that will help here? Ceramic roof tiles. That reduces siege damage from fire. As well as some earthquake uh, damages. As well as fire. As, uh, that's a good thing too. Silk. Silk weaver. Uh, the culture again. The jade. I think let's do the tiles. Churn drill. That's the copper mine and so on. This could also be important. But let's do the ceramic roof tiles in case somebody decides to siege us at this point. So yes, uh, I don't think we've met any of our major rival states yet. But the bandits do seem to be rather troublesome. There's this killer unit coming up here. They've killed Mo Wu. Now they want uh, the next leader. So yes, can we recruit anyone else here? Maybe some more nobles. I think they might be able to reach the city of Ying before the leader and his entourage. So, okay, that's something. So bring them forth and uh, let's see what we can do with them. Hmm, interesting to see this information. So two turns. Okay, that's a better prospect. Hopefully that's enough. Anything else we need to do? We finished the farm here in Ying, so... Uh, not growing yet. Interesting. So they're building... What are they doing actually at the moment? Everyone's busy with something. Don't see any farm construction. Oh well. Leave them as it is. Just uh, we'll see what happens in the next turn. So let's move on. The bandits haven't moved here. That's good. They're taking position in the forest. Uh, they moved a little bit, but that wasn't really uh, anything effective. So, yes, I think we'll be able to intercept them. Hopefully these two units, the noble axemen and the peasant light spearmen, will be enough. They should reach them in the next turn if the bandits also move forward. So I think... Uh, Kao Hui here, he can try and take out those uh, bandits that killed his predecessor. Maybe he'll get some legitimacy from that. So they say we have to try and predict where the bandits are going to go, but it's a bit too far to do that. So let's see, uh, Ruo, what's happening here? Everyone is busy with the farm, so that'll take one more turn and hopefully the city will grow nicely then. And what's happening now in Ying still? Nothing. I don't see where they're busy. I'm obviously missing something here. But let's just queue up another farm. They say obviously we can't do it if we don't have the population. But then it will be there in the queue somewhere. Maybe it's because of the bandits. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, what else is uh, in the news? There is the farm finished in our capital. So... That's good. So let's move on. Okay, there's battle. Yes, they did move forward. So now we'll see some action. Not the disastrous death of Mo Wu. I didn't give them any tactics, but hopefully the numbers will make a difference. It does look like the smaller unit is trying to flank them. Fight! This is our homeland! We cannot lose the mandate of heaven! Although technically I think we would have lost it with the death of our leader. No, I think we've got this. We've got them from two sides now. There we go. Not too many casualties. I mean, most of them are still there, but... That does make sense. We're not just going to have a mass slaughter instantly. It will take time to whittle them down. So they flee far beyond our borders, but we we'll definitely have to chase them down. I'm not going to have them prowling about 
skulking in the shadows, hunting traders and farmers and whatnot. So let's fast forward and uh, see what's happening on the other side. Militia and nobles. Militia and noble units have no cost to recruit, so it may be better to disband some units and raise them again when needed. So that's good to know, but I think we do need these ones right now. So this will be no contest at all, and I think the bandits will probably move ahead. They've already done so, so we'll have another battle in the next turn. You know, I have to say, this game is very relaxing. It's quite a slow pace, and you can take your time and really consider things, so I, uh, I like that. So another farm is now done in Ruhr, so hopefully that city or town at this point is growing. Yes, it is, so that's one good thing. Battle report, let's just have a look here. 18 of our troops died, but 29 of theirs died, so as long as that remains the situation, we'll have no trouble at all. Then, is there anything else? What is happening in Ying here? Where, where is the population? Where did they go? Okay, they are building now there again. No unhappiness, that's interesting. And in Danyang, 3% for the peasants, so that's okay. I think we're uh, managing that just fine as it is at the moment. But the nobles, that's the problem, so the pavilion is definitely needed. What was she on about? Trade is the key to building a powerful economy. Build bazaars and settlements to begin trading between them, especially if they have useful resources. That's good to know. I don't think we have the uh, ability to build a bazaar yet. Let's just see. That would be inside the city. Bazaar, oh, okay, never mind that. Hmm, I can just right click and then it goes straight into the queue. Uh, some maintenance allows trade goods to be sold to nearby settlements. I wonder what the range is on that. The income derived from the trade depends on the number of trade items produced with, uh, which the other settlement does not have and the population of that settlement. So trade between the larger cities will naturally make more profit. Every settlement has some local specialities that may be traded for some modest profit, so there'll always be some trade. Trade may be conducted with other settlements controlled by other factions provided they are not at war. So that's good. Let's queue it up, since there's not that much peasant unhappiness. Ruo, what are you doing? Nothing. Everyone is happily farming away, so there is no peasant unhappiness, but some nobles again. Maybe we can queue up the pavilion here as well. I wonder, they probably don't share the use of the pavilions, so each town or city must have its own. So I think it's worth it, just to placate everyone. Then, what else? There was just the farm and the battle report. So, where is our expeditionary force? I think let's send them... Where will they go? Probably north. But we can only move that far in one turn anyway. Then, I think these uh, troops here are on the right path, so let's leave them as it is. And then I think we can move on. Oh yes, somewhere there's conflict. Okay, round two. We will not tolerate bandits. We are a cultured people, and we will not have this debauchery. There's another fight happening on the other front as well. I think we've got this one locked down. Let's just have a look. We've never seen our new leader, Kao Hui, in battle. It's unfortunately happening in the marshland. I wonder if that has some penalty. Oh, that was easy. Revenge for Mo Wu. And the other side, they're actually lasting longer than the other ones. But there they go again. Some more bodies in the dirt. Okay, can speed it up. 
Now I think it's just going to be a case of chasing these bandits down. Seems there's even another force here, a larger one. Interesting. Well, our largest force is here as well. So let's send them down and through. The other small force might also try and ambush us, but... I think we'll be okay. Maybe I should just be safe and tell the leader's bodyguard to take another tactic. What about support? Form into the line of battle and support the other units. Only move to attack enemy units that are very close or that are threatening or engaging with friends. No, let's take a bit more of a cautious posture. Defend, yes. Learn from the past. The others can rush forth and attack. Okay, is there anything else to do? We have a new heir. That's interesting. Wang Guo. This man has been nominated as your leader's heir. Should the leader die, he will assume power with the minimum of disruption. Okay, that's good. I was wondering, is this now a rival to Kao Hui here? No. Okay, so at least someone else is lined up. Good. I wonder, do we see him on the map already? Probably not. No, we do. Good, so he can get some experience. I think let's send him to meet up with the other force on the western front. And uh, maybe he can get some experience. I mean, if he's going to lead the state of Chu, he needs to know what he's doing. Battle reports, uh, very few casualties for us there, but also for them. 1 and 12, that's the best yet. Okay, so let's have a look at the cities. We can see so easily what's happening here. I love this feature. So I think more farms are in order. When the cities are no longer growing, we need to start getting more food. But they're still busy with that one, so we've got that one in the bag. What about rural in the north? Uh, they are not... No, they are busy with something. It's still the pavilion. Oh yes, that takes a long time to finish. I think the pavilion in Danyan is not finished yet. Either, no. High noble unrest, oh dear. 56%. Okay, never mind this whole thing about our heir going anywhere. He is staying right here. Cancel move. Maybe he has some effect to calm the uh, unrest as well. No, cancel. I want some information about you. Oh, just left click on this one. So, does he have any... Uh, he has some virtue and he has some... Chi as well, so... Does that actually help? This man's rating reduces unrest in settlements by 10. Okay, good, so... He might just be able to hold off the rebellion. Okay, next season. Trouble in the East. Oh yes, this is going to be interesting with the two different groups. But our capital is right there. We cannot let this affront stand. Now, is the leader taking a defensive posture? I'm wondering because it seems like he's just run, ran into the battle here. Okay, never mind. The uh, ones attacking him have run away. And he's not going for anyone else. Okay, good. So they break and run quickly. That's a very good outcome. Anything else what's happening on the other side? I have to get used to moving the, the camera with the left mouse button. It doesn't scroll here. Nope, I think that's it. Other bandits have vanished into thin air. But there is an opportunity here to encounter a venerable teacher, but I think we need a leader to do that. I mean, what does it say? Move a character. So I think we have to. Let's just move these troops in and see what happens. Nothing, I'm sure, but then we can start revealing some of the map to the west here. Maybe that's also a good place to expand in the future. I think also, uh, since the last episode, I've been playing a few more turns with my original 
game as well, the one that I did a few turns for before I started this one. And uh, there I also saw that if there's a settler that's ready to deploy, they will let us know. So I don't have to specifically say I want to train a settler and be on the lookout for that sort of thing. It will happen when it's ready. So how long? Four turns. There we go. So something else we don't have to worry about. Pavilions and you are still building the farm. It's actually interesting. We can see it starting to take shape here, but no, no real terraforming is happening yet. Then let's have a look at the rhino. We haven't done that yet. They seem very peaceful. They're just standing here. Our farmers are right over there, but they don't really migrate around, which is good, I think. Ah, yes, the rhino is so, so in danger today, especially here in South Africa. So much poaching happening. Yes, I'm wondering if they won't disappear in my own lifetime. Anyway, let's go and look at the research here. So, thought and knowledge. I'm not sure if there's any military application here, so... What's this one? National myth. I think we need a national myth, don't you? Our people should learn the tales of their ancestors, of the yellow emperor who taught their forebears to sow grain and wear clothes, of Yao and Shun who taught them how to live together in a strong state and of you the great who tamed the great floods and brought prosperity to the land. Good, teach them. Knowledge, here we go, now we get into this. I think horse riding, it's going to take 20 turns though. And it doesn't give us a unit. The next one gives us a unit. So let's rather go for the composite bow. Unlike a simple bow, a composite bow is made of multiple materials, wood, sinew or horn glued together. Using different materials on inner and outer edges allows it to bend further, allowing construction of bows that are powerful without being unduly large. Noble archers. Good, that'll definitely come in handy. We can station them in all of our cities or at least recruit them when the time is necessary and then they can fire out behind the walls. Which reminds me, we still need walls in the other towns. We are definitely going to take a more defensive posture. I'm not going to be a, you know, a leader filled with bloodlust. We must take a cautious and, uh, you know, muted tone here. So, yes, actually in, in that sense also, I was thinking now, since we're dealing with ancient China, it might be so interesting to, in each episode, reflect on some of Sun Tzu's writing since it might actually come in handy here. This is a very short part. Thus we may know that there are five essentials for victory. He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit throughout all its ranks. That's where the national myth comes in, I think. He will win who prepared himself waits to take the enemy unprepared. He will win who has military capacity and is not interfered with by the sovereign. So I think in that sense we have it rather well on that last one since I am the sovereign, but then I mustn't get in my own way. And then also the thing about military capacity is a very good point. This is why we need to focus on more units and more military technology. So one of your stacks isn't in a garrison, has no movement orders. Okay, no, stop. This must be the heir here. So what can I say for him? Let's just make sure it's referring to this one. No, it's not. Okay, so they don't, just don't have movement orders. Okay, cross the river. In uh, most other games, this would not be a very good situation. You don't cross a river to reach the enemy. Since we just heard now from Sun Tzu, you need to wait to take the enemy unprepared. You can't just rush forward like this. But I think it will be okay here. Hopefully, anyway, we outnumber them greatly, and now we can actually learn if the river has a penalty to it. 
Okay, move on. So it does happen, yes, there is a fight, but uh, we're going to meet each other in the river. Not the best half of them are drowning. The Battle of the Red River. Good, the leader is staying on the side there. Just imagine how the bodies floating down the river. This would be a very famous battle, I think. I certainly don't envy any of these people. My alarm is going off. Well, there goes the one, but the other one is being a bit more resilient now. Okay, there they go as well. So we've won the day in this river. I have no idea which river this would be in real life. I should actually look because we should be able to find these, uh, well, maybe not these cities, but maybe Danyang will be on the map in real China. Although the name might have changed, but it would be interesting, you know, to compare some of these features and so on. Okay, fast forward. So we're chasing these bandits all the way into the east. And there's somebody else. New power encountered. That's an interesting note to leave this episode off on. So let's have a look at them. What are they? So they seem to be spearmen. If we click on them, can we get some information? Peasant light spearmen. So this is just basically a scouting unit. So who did we meet? The Han. You have encountered a previously unknown power. Let us hope that they are either weak or friendly. Then our chi has increased with Wang Wu. As this man matures and moves towards his prime, his levels of confidence and energy have increased and he has become a more capable leader. That's a good thing. Then battle report and another farm. But I think let's look at the diplomacy here. Hopefully they also help us with the bandits since we, I think we would all be hostile to the bandits. Ah, I cannot. You're not currently in contact with this player. You do not know the location of any of their settlements or characters. Okay, I get it. It's because this is just a peasant unit. It doesn't actually have one of their leaders. So we must uh, explore more towards the northeast here to actually find one of their cities. Okay, and then of course we have to fight there in the uh, west as well. You know, slow pace, but I like it. Some real strategy here and uh, obviously we can't overtax our peasants or they get rowdy. So thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me next time. I'm enjoying this series and I look forward to the next episode. Have a fantastic day.